going to take you out to the sea, off to the west coast of Ireland, and tell you about some different species that you can catch. Sorry? You're... Ha! You're a presenter. You're a... You're a what? You're a fishing... No, no, I'm the fishing presenter. If you just uh, leave, that'd be fine. No, I'm sorry. You're going to have to go, because this is the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Absolutely, yeah. We, we, we don't do that type of presenter with all the head movement and everything. We don't do those. We just do... Fishing show stuff, fishing show talk for fishermen. Shove it. Oh, really? Oh, oh, I see. I see. I... I soon got that other presenter sorted out. Yeah, got my mum to come in and boot him out. Now then, Greek mullet, Greek mullet, there's some great fish to catch, they're not easy. Any mullet, there's golden grey mullet, there's thin lip mullet, and there's thick lip mullet. Who's thick, thick lip mullet? Now, they're the most common ones, grey mullet, just the thick lips. Big fish, they grow to double figures. How are you gonna catch them? I would generally say float fishing, brilliant sport, especially in the summer months when it's warmer. What tackle do you need? If you're a freshwater angler, you've probably got it anyway for float fishing. If you're a sea fisherman or a beach fisherman with heavy gear, you can pick up some pretty cheap tackle. I use one of these fixed balls. It's absolutely filthy because it's covered in ground bait because it's been fishing. I haven't cleaned it yet. On that, it's just got a little stern drag on this one. We can have a front drag, doesn't matter which, which type of reel you get. I've got uh, about six pound line on there. That's all you need for mullet fishing. You don't really need anything heavier. And an Avon type float there, uh, rod, sorry, Avon rod there. That's a two piece, you've got nine feet. Uh, that's all you need. Now, most people think sea fishing, great big heavy leads. For mullet fishing, no, a little bit more finesse, you need some floats. Now, most mullet fishing is basically on the surface. Now, you can catch them on the bottom, you can catch them suspended, you know, two or three feet down. Generally, surface fishing is a way to catch them. And for that, I use a float. Now this one's a river float called a body Avon balsa and what I do is fish that maybe what's that three feet from the hook basically so I want some cast weight there but I don't want this all to splash shallow too close to the piece of bread crust I'll be using it's predominantly bread crust I'm using a specialist hook there it's called a partridge specialist hook it doesn't matter really what you use wide gate narrow gate really doesn't matter um, wouldn't recommend barbless. I would just use barb because they're hard enough to catch as it is and you don't want to fall it off. So this one, size 10 hook, three feet to your float. But here's a tip guys, when you shot that float down to here so that you cock the float so there's just that little bit showing, I bulk it, almost shot here to cock it. I do not want that lead, if I put the lead here, the weights, you know, the sinkers, I think they call them in America, sinkers, the split shot, whatever you want to call it. As you cast, it's going to slap in the water it's going to make, well, two lots of splash. One splash from the float going in, then it helicopters and rotates over. Bosh, in goes another lot of, you know, split shot. And that could spook the fish. So try and bulk your weights, as it were, underneath the float like that. You can fix it bottom end only, or you can fix it both here with a float rubber and the other line go through the bottom. That's probably the standard way to do it like that. Now, you can also use these sort of clear ones that you can buy now. Some mullet anglers swear by these because say, uh, say the mullet can't see them. I'll tell you what, I think the mullet can see them, but there you go. If the anglers are happy buying them, buy away guys. It's your money, not mine. I personally catch on these. But what you can also get, if you go and look at some of the carp gear now, freshwater carp gear, they do self-cocking floats and you can get self-cocking floats with the weights already integrated within that float system. And then you attach that bottom end only fire it out, perhaps this one's a bit big, but just using it to illustrate, and there you are, shot it down like that. You can use a couple of other things. They're called bubble floats. Bit old fashioned, this one's an American one, I think. It's a plastic 
cylinder that you can fill with water to give you casting weight, but when it goes out there, it sinks into the surface film and looks like a bubble of water because it's clear. And all you do there is just, as a little spring system, you just push that out on the top and it pushes a hook out here, slide your line through there, release it, and the U of the clip tugs it back and it's nice and snug. So that's another method. Bubble floats are also circular, perfectly circular cylinders. A bit old fashioned, but you can still buy them. I'll tell you what, it's still effective. Or you can use, I've got this green gunky stuff. It's like a green putty. We used to call it floater bait. I don't even know what the products are now. Maybe they still make this stuff called floater bait. Get a ball of that, mold it around your line. Again, three feet from the hook, gives you casting weight you can get out there. And of course, this one has weight you don't even need to put any shot on it as well. All you need then, a pair of forceps, a nice landing net. Now, I would use a smallish landing net like this, but this one flips out, it's a trout one, and then with a twist of the handle, it extends, and I can get out and get some mullet. So there you go. Let's take you guys mullet fishing before this presenter comes back. The first thing you need to find is the state of the tide. With some creeks, they dry out at low water, so that obviously means, yeah, no fish. Get yourself a tide table for the area you want to fish and also a chart which should show you whether that particular creek dries out or not. And when you even have a foot of water, start looking for signs of those mullet moving among the weed. They could just be dimpling the surface as they feed, or they even leave a small wake as they cruise along. Even if a light breeze ripples the surface, they will still be seen as their movements break up that symmetry of those ripples. The location of them is the first step. Sometimes they lay stationary, just basking in the sunshine, so you'll see them easier if you wear a pair of polarizing glasses. Single fish like this can be extremely difficult to tempt, as they're gonna be on their guard and easily spooked by a clumsy cast. Well, here we are under a typical mullet situation. And would you believe it? I haven't got any mullet tackle with me. Now you've seen those rigs for mullet if you are going to target mullet directly, but very often the species being what they are, they can turn up anywhere. And they have. I'm here over on the Barrier Peninsula, fishing for big bull husk, conger, and what am I finding everywhere? mullet and I've got no mullet gear. The nicest I've got is my sawn off cart rod tip glued into a broken rod butt which I use spinning off the shore as a makeshift thing for Pollock. Fixed ball reel, about 12 pound line on there, Just little, one of those little storm reels with a stern drag so dead simple. As I go, I'm going to have a go and try and catch a mullet but listen if you're going to target them off here you need plenty of bread. I'll show you what I do. All I've got is a little folding ground bait bucket. Pinched that off for Paul Harris, who we're fishing with over here. I've mashed up some bread, just like this. That's all you need. Sop up a regular loaf. Bit wet, but keep, say, half of it back for throwing it on the surface. This wet bread here, I'll stir it up. And that's going to sink down on the bottom. So I don't throw that in deep water, down to about three feet, so I can see it broken up on the bottom in case the mullet come and feed on that. I break up small pieces, just like this throw it all out on the surface and that gives me the aspect of fishing on the bottom for the mullet or fishing on the surface. I personally don't hold up much hope with the tackle I'm using but a bit of a breeze on the water I'm going to give it a shot do you know what I mean this is how you've got to be versatile all round fishing is about catching all the different diverse species out there. If I've got a chance I'm going to take it. Now then sometimes you can see the mullet there, telltale giveaway signs, little dorsal fin dimpling on the surface just as they're tipping up, sometimes the tip of their tail, they tip in shallow water, say well, a foot or so deep, they'll come in right in amongst the kelp, and as they tip up to feed on the bottom, their tail, the top of their tail, or their caudal, uh, caudal fin and the tail fin both stick out the surface, you can see these little bits sticking up, and if you see them cruising and waking like that, follow where they're going to, see where they settle on, and then try and target them with some bread. Now you might throw the bread in and they spook. That's a chance you've got to take. So try and, you know, just let them, let them settle down a little bit. And I'll personally try them normally with the baiting, baiting stuff first. It's on the bottom. 
in a few, like out here, there's some clear patches. Now they've just moved away, they've drifted away from here. But I'm gonna throw some out anyway. And obviously you hope there's no seagulls around to see you throwing them in. But they have beady eyes and they generally spot all the bread. So I let that sink to the bottom, but I'm also gonna throw a few pieces on the surface as well, because I feel those drifting down, there's quite a strong breeze, doesn't look at here, that will drift down and that might settle and we might even see some feeding on the surface. They have been in here, the wind's come up. I've got to give it a shot, haven't I? Goodness me. You can see my problem here. There's only a small area, a slack water, which is smooth, where I can cast that floating bread crust into. Then the breeze picks up, making a ripple that will push all those free offerings out of my casting range and unfortunately could take those feeding mullet with it. I need to fish in close to give me a chance. Just watch this mullet nudge the bread, taking tiny pieces off the edge, but not taking the whole bait. They are extremely crafty critters, that's for sure. Don't strike until you see all of the bread disappear inside that mouth. A higher vantage point allows me to see down through the water better, but remember, they will also be able to see you. As the mullet approach the bait, freeze, don't move a muscle. The slightest movement will put them on their guard. And even if you can see them, never take it for granted that they are catchable. It's mullet fishing, guys. <laughs> You're gonna love it. Well, guys, the curse of the mullet fisherman is called the breeze drifting the bread too far out for you to cast to. But in fact, I've actually got a few feeding on bread out there. I just can't cast to them because I don't have that tackle I showed you earlier. You need about five pound line, this is a bit heavy. You need a self cocking float, haven't got that. I'm free lining, Phew, gonna be lucky if I get one here. But they are there, very, very tricky. But that's what mullet fishing is all about. They are not an easy fish to catch. If you get them going on the bread, they can in fact be an easy fish to hook. But pff, this breeze, rain's coming now. I don't hold out much hope really, although there is a harbour further down that I could try when this tide is at the same state. I quite like low tide, and this is just off high tide, it's about an hour down. I like low tide, there's another one moving, I just cannot get to it. I'll tell you what, if I don't get one here, I think I'm gonna run up, probably this evening, have a go at that harbour, because it's sheltered, and I like sheltered, no ripple, I can see the fish take the bait, and that's important when you haven't got a float to look, you're gonna to have to see it visually, bang, strike and set the hook. It is totally awesome mullet fishing when it does happen. It might not happen today. Now that's what I call a serious MOT test. Blimey, I hope mine doesn't fail. It certainly doesn't float. The scenery around some of those inshore creeks is amazing. But I waited for the breeze to drop and the following evening changed creeks to one where the breeze had less influence on the bait. It was a magnificent spot. And shore fishing guide Paul Harris was also down there, trying to get as a mullet for the camera. He's a master at this fishing, but even the master couldn't entice these to take. Which of course is what makes them such a prize catch. There's no need to kill them, although they are edible. Just grab a picture and then release them. And just look at the superb clarity of this water as the incoming tide pushes fresh salt water into the creek and starts to float all the weed and kelp. Just break off a piece of crust, put the hook point through it once, then turn it and gently push the point in the other side. Finally, just pinch a tiny piece of the softer flake onto the edge of the hook eye to both cover it and help keep the bread on. If you're free lining like I am, leave a long drop from the rod tip to bait and gently toss the bait through the air. If you cast too fast with a shorter drop, the bread will generally fly off the hook. Yes, frustrating. Always check your drag setting. Too tight and you might tear that small hook out. 
If there is a breeze blowing down the creek, try to use it to your advantage. Get upwind so any free offerings you throw in will drift downwind on those ripples. Then, if you see mullets start to feed, you can move down towards them rather than waiting for them to come to you. And an early flood tide in mornings or evenings will also put the odds slightly in your favour, as those lower light levels increase your chances a lot. Remember, this is finesse fishing where everything should be done smoothly. Take time to search out every small aspect of that creek. They might be just where the sea enters, they might be in the central area, they might even be right at the top where the top of the tide comes in and that's what I found here. Right guys, we're mullet fishing, where dad is, and we've been here about 15, 20 minutes, bit of ground bait, bread ground bait, I'm running over, he's trying to keep it on the rod, he's got a small broken off carp rod, I don't know how he's got it, but he's onto a fish over there. As regular watchers of the Totally Awesome Fishing Show will know, Graham Pullen rarely has a landing net close by him. He wanders off all over the place. But by pure skill and experience of age, I managed to get this fish in and gently lift it out of the water. What a result. What a really good result. Oh, oh. I'm too old for all this. Last evening's fishing. Where are we going to catch a mullet? No mullet. I just happened to see some further down. I've been trying Polaroids, but it's too dark, so I had to go back to the deriving spectacles. And I just got them going on bread on the surface. They are way twitchy. And that puppy is about, you tell me, three plus, three and a half, something like that. What a cracker, what a cracker jackfish. And that shows you. These little pier mullet can be caught, although I've just had to come away from the pier. Yeah, I think it's too deep there, but look at that fish. What a beauty, bread, as we talked about earlier, and that is a nice fish. Let's slide him back slowly. Oh, ho, ho. we came good in the end. Just look at that mullet. Just let him recover there, because they give a hell of a scrap. And that's exactly what that one did, big time scrap. There's others there, but they are way, way twitchy. Way twitchy. Let's just let him rest there, get the bubbles out of him. Turn him round and just work him towards the sea there. There's the bubbles. You get air bubbles in them that come up through the stomach. You can. Oh, he's on his own. There we go. What a beauty. Get him from there, Mike. Go around the other side. No, you take it again. Come on, I'll meet him. He's gone. No, oh, no glass is here. Oh, we got oh, one. Oh, nailing me. Ah. Like Don't mind. Oh, no, it's good. 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 Oh,